Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you haven't seen me before, my name is Ava and I'm a PhD student at UCL. So I thought I'd talk about third wave therapies that are mainly focused on aspects such as acceptance and mindfulness. So first wave therapy would involve behaviour therapy, second wave would be cognitive therapy and cognitive behaviour therapy, and third wave therapy would be things like mindfulness, dialectical behaviour therapy, acceptance and commitment. So I'm not going to talk at all about the first or the second wave therapies and if you want me to speak about them in more detail I can do so in a different video. So in terms of third wave therapies I'm going to talk about acceptance and commitment, mindfulness, compassion focused therapy and DBT. The reason behind third wave therapies is that sometimes people have negative thoughts that are realistic and problems that cannot be controlled or solved. In this situation, control oriented strategies would actually be detrimental to that individual's psychological well-being. There would also be no additional benefit of adding some sort of cognitive restructuring. So first I'm going to talk about acceptance and commitment therapy and this is very much focused on the idea of psychological flexibility as well as looking at the behaviours we have and whether carrying on these behaviours or resisting them meets the values that we think are important day to day. So here are some key domains relating to ACT. In order to be psychologically flexible you need to show contact with the present moment, clarity and contact with your personal values, so what you see important um, in terms of your own self-identity and in terms of what you value in your life. You need to be committed to actions towards these values. You need to have a flexible perspective, which means that depending on the situation you may be in, um, when you have to adapt your kind of attitude towards things when there is a changing situation. You need to be able to diffuse situations that you might think are difficult. And you must show some sort of willingness and acceptance when things don't go your way. So if you were psychologically inflexible, you would lack clarity or contact with your values, so you wouldn't really know what you find important in your life. You would focus prominently on the past and the future and not the present moment. You would have attachment to yourself and your specific story. You would show avoidance behaviours. You can basically think of them in terms of these three points. Firstly, accepting experiences even if they do cause you chronic pain in some way. Secondly, choosing behaviours mindfully instead of making them automatic or conditional responses to an event. And thirdly, taking action in your life and feeling some sort of agency rather than thinking that you're not in control of certain aspects of your life that might be negative. So one example of its use is in chronic pain. So when an individual feels chronic pain, they may try and avoid certain activities that they associate with the pain. But by doing this, they may actually end up focusing more on the fact that they have pain because they're unable to do the hobbies that they usually enjoy. Therefore, managing their pain becomes a full-time job and they can't really focus on other values that they may have in their lives. So in this situation, these individuals would have to focus on the kind of activities that they would do without chronic pain and then see what kind of values that they see are important regardless of the pain that they may feel. So rather than actually reducing the pain per se, the point of this therapy is to accept the fact that this pain exists and this acceptance of the pain in their life has actually been shown to reduce certain mental health issues such as depression and anxiety and it also means having an increase in activities and hobbies that individual feel would make them more satisfied within their life. So in terms of mental health difficulties, CBT would mainly focus on tackling irrational anxiety or depressive thoughts whereas ACT would focus more on being mindful and being in the moment and accepting these thoughts in your mind and making sure that the consequence of these is that you are not reducing activities or actions that would reduce your quality of life and instead you focus on the values you see as important and make sure that although you can accept these negative emotions they do not compromise the kind of lifestyle that you lead and the values that you think are important to achieve. So now I'm going to focus on mindfulness. So there are two specific types of therapies that overlap in quite a lot of ways. So this is mindfulness-based stress reduction and mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. So now I'm going to show a little diagram that kind of explains how these two therapies overlap in some ways and what makes them distinct. So I'm just going to reference this as MBSR and MBCT. So MBCT has an explicit focus on turning towards low mood and negative thoughts early and making sure that participants gain experience and recognise these symptoms and feel confidence in their ability to respond to them. So MBCT was developed to prevent future episodes of depression 
or people with a history of recurrent depression, so reducing depressive relapse. And it's based on the observation that recurrence in people who have recovered from an episode is more likely when the patterns of negative thinking are triggered by low moods encountered in the course of everyday life. So basically, negative thoughts would lead to low mood and this pattern escalates to bring on a relapse of depression. So in this situation, CBT techniques are incorporated into the program to promote greater awareness of these patterns and be mindfulness to disengage this link from occurring. So it's focused on changing your relationship to your unwanted thoughts, feelings and bodily sensations so that people no longer try to avoid them or react to them automatically, but rather respond to them in an intentional and skillful manner. And in terms of MBSR, this is when participants learn to recognise unhelpful reactions to difficulty and learn to bring an interest, accepting and non-judgmental attitude to all experiences, including negative or difficult emotions, sensations, thoughts and behaviours. MBCT replaces some of the content of MBSR with a focus on specific patterns of negative thinking that people with depression are vulnerable to. And from the diagram, you can see that for MBSR, the focus is more on the general population who have some sort of acute or chronic stress, such as work, pain and illness. It examines the effects of this chronic stress and teaches you how to have more healthy responsive and um, have more adaptive coping skills, emphasizing feeling more in the present moment, whereas mindfulness-based cognitive therapy is more specific to individuals who have had recurrent depression or anxiety and enhances awareness of the negative states built on self-care. There are three principles related to this kind of mindfulness approach. So one of them is shifting. So this would be from goal-orientated behavior where you feel like you need to achieve certain things to a willingness to approach the, the moment. So that means being adaptive when things go wrong and not feeling uh, in heightened stress or arousal when things don't go your way and you don't meet the goal you specifically wanted to. So it means being a bit more flexible in what you want to achieve. Stepping out of autopilot, which means becoming more aware of your physical bodily sensations as well as your thoughts rather than them being an automatic process. Being able to make sure it's not in an automatic process means you have more control over the reactions you may feel after having a specific thought. Therefore, you can then choose how you respond to these difficulties in an adaptive and healthy manner rather than being unaware of them and therefore choosing options such as avoidance that might not be as healthy as possible. So now I'm going to talk about compassion focused therapy and this involves three different systems and it's basically about how some of these systems may be on overdrive while other parts of the systems are on underdrive and are not being activated at all. And this imbalance between the three systems is what causes individuals to have negative self-esteem, less confidence in themselves, and it's about making sure that we treat ourselves in the correct way when we have these negative emotions and that these three systems are being utilized in the correct context. So people can be in a state of threat, which is when you focus on seeking protection from danger, a sense of drive, which is when a mindset is attuned to what you want, what you seek and what you aspire to having, or the soothing mindset, which is when you believe in giving yourself self-care, nurturing yourself and being affectionate. So in order to healthily function, the soothing system is necessary. And without it, individuals are prone to self-criticism, self-attack and shame. Each of the states are associated with distinct feeling states, motivations, behaviours, neuroanatomy and neurochemistry. So for the threat system, it's very powerful and it activates when you are feeling that there's some sort of threat and it makes you take action when you have this threat in your life. And it does this by creating feelings of anxiety, fear or avoidance in response to this threatening stimuli. And this can cause some sort of fight or flight response or freeze response, which leads us to ad adapt, avoid or freeze or submission, which can lead to feelings of shame. It can also cause feelings of self-attacking and self-criticism. So when you have this activated threat system, you have more stress hormone in your body, such as cortisol and adrenaline. And research shows that when you have more of this in your body, you're more focused on threat based information. So you're more focused on negative information in your environment rather than positive information. Due to our brain's ability to imagine and ruminate on these thoughts, it's possible that this system can run even in the absence of an actual threat, 
which means that there'll be times where you're living unnecessarily in a state of threat, where you're feeling anxious, all these negative thoughts, even when the stimuli has gone. The drive system, however, is a motivational system that has its roots in evolution. So the reason behind this is it drives our need to secure food, shelter, comfort and territory. But nowadays in the modern developed society, this drive would be more the drive for money, achievement, competitiveness, social rank and status. So in other words, this system is about achievement and success and getting things done. It's highly influenced by the chemical dopamine, which is seen as a reward chemical, and we can experience a flood of dopamine whenever we achieve something that we set out to achieve. When this system is on overdrive, it can lead to addictive and compulsive behaviors such as, such as chasing an unachievable goal, and it can also lead to people pursuing achievements in unrelenting ways that causes stress, burnout, depression, and perfectionism. Unlike the threat and driving system, which activates us, the soothing system is associated with peaceful states, such as feelings of being safe, calm, peaceful and content. It operates naturally when there's no threat to defend against and no goals that must be pursued. This feel-good neurochemical could involve an increase in opiates, endorphins and oxytocin. Like the threat and the drive system, we already come into the world hardwired with a soothing system. However, for many people, this soothing system is often hugely misunderstood and not used enough or is completely blocked. This may be true for people who have difficult family upbringings or with a history of complex trauma. For example, people who have painful emotional or interpersonal experiences, such as childhood experiences of shame, rejection, bullying, or parental unresponsiveness or hostility, the very behaviours and emotions associated with caring or safeness, such as warmth, closeness and soothing, can actually trigger a sense of threat and therefore not safeness. An imbalance in these three signals can lead to many mental health problems and we know that people who don't utilise their soothing system often experience intense shame and self-criticism, which triggers an excess of cortisol and stress hormones, which then creates defensiveness, hostility and suspicion. Luckily, being able to tap into the soothing system involves an established set of skills and these skills can be learned and this fact is based off of extensive scientific research. Therefore, compassion focused therapy focuses on activating this soothing system that we already have a drive to do evolutionary wise, but we now underutilize perhaps due to childhood experiences or just negative experiences that we have in our life. It could also be because of the amount of threats or drives that we feel like we need to pursue in our lives, we forget that the soothing system actually needs to be activated when these situations. We also need to think about the soothing system being activated in situations where there is no threat and where there doesn't seem to be a drive to achieve a goal. Therefore, the soothing system can only really be activated naturally when you don't feel like there's a sense of threat or when you don't focus on these specific goals. So DBT was firstly developed for women with borderline personality disorder, as well as self-injurious behavior or suicidal thoughts. These individuals lacked interpersonal self-regulation distress tolerance skills. So the main focus of this was to increase meaningful behavior in the face of these distressing situations and emotions. So DBT has four behavior targets. So reducing life-threatening suicidal acts or self-harm, decreasing behavior that interferes with the therapy, reducing behavior that interferes with the quality of life, and increasing behavior skills. And this focuses on four specific modules. So mindfulness involves thinking about the emotions, feelings, and sensations you may have in a non-judgmental manner. And in DBT, this is usually split into what skills and how skills. So what skills would be what are the emotions, feelings, sensations that you're feeling at that present moment? And it's about identifying them. It also means separating the emotions from the sensations and the thoughts. So delineating what the specific emotions, thoughts and feelings that you are experiencing. And the how skills are about tolerating these intense feelings, thoughts or sensations you may have and accepting that part of yourself. This also involves overcoming things that might make mindfulness more difficult, such as doubt, restlessness or sleepiness. It also means taking effective actions so that you continuously do these mindfulness activities regularly in your day to day life. Now, the second module is distress tolerance, and this occurs when mindfulness just isn't enough in those situations of intense distress. So distress tolerance can help you distract yourself when you're calm enough to deal with an emotion or situation. 
self-soothe by relaxing and using your senses to be more peaceful and comparing coping strategies by looking at the pros and cons of both. So the third module is interpersonal effectiveness. When you're experiencing intense emotions and rapid mood changes, it can be very hard to relate to other people. Knowing how you feel and what you want is really important when you're thinking of how to fulfill emotional connections with others. So interpersonal effectiveness can make these things more clear to you. It involves using listening skills, social skills, and communication and assertiveness in order to change situation outcomes without changing your values and being true to yourself. These kind of steps involve learning what you want and thinking about the steps you need to take to get it, learning how to work through conflict or challenges in relationships, and self-respect effectiveness or gaining more respect in yourself. And the last module is emotional regulation. So this involves managing these intense emotions and feelings that you may get even when you think there's no escape. So this involves focusing and identifying primary emotional reactions before they turn into secondary distressing reactions. For example, a primary emotion of anger might lead to guilt, low self-esteem, self-criticism, and being ashamed. So part of this involves overcoming barriers to emotions that have positive effects and retaining responsibility for them. So this involves increasing emotions that have positive effects by reducing the barriers between that and making sure you reduce the vulnerability that you feel by reducing the barriers to emotions that can have a positive consequence. It also involves solving problems in helpful ways and avoiding uh, coping strategies that may be unhelpful and impulsive. So DBT uses three types of therapy to target these four modules, and that is one-to-one -one therapy, skills training, and phone coaching. It also involves the therapist validating the patient's actions, saying that they make sense in relation to that individual's personal experiences without saying whether or not it is the best approach to take. So these are the types of third wave therapies. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it interested you. If you have any questions or any ideas for future videos, then please comment below. If you liked the video, then please like and subscribe. And I hope that you have a great day. Thanks for watching.